Australian Test cricket. An absolute sellout, 42,000 people cheering him out of the centre. What he didn't half get out of the centre. I think he might be just a little nervous. He was sound on the ground almost before the catch was taken. You know, I got out of the pitch really quickly because I just thought if I take too much of this emotion in, there was so much goodwill in the crowd and you know people were wishing me well before and during the game and in the mornings and phone calls and messages and it was it was it was unbelievable support. It was almost the point where it was too much. If I took too much in, I just couldn't concentrate on what I was doing. So. I just tried to get the pitch as quick as I could to clear my mind to get out and take centre and to own the turf, which I tried to do. Boys away. He's whipped it away. Listen to that roar as the ball runs away into the boundary rope. Steve Waugh's off the mark at the SCG. I hit a four off Matthew Hoggart off my legs just before the tee break and just felt really good. And I came in the change while I was only four and eight, four and eight out, I think. And Justin Langer said, how are you feeling? I said, mate, I feel fantastic. It just feels great. And I don't know why I said that because I only faced probably a couple, six or eight balls and uh, went back out after that and it just, I knew that if I concentrated, I was going to score runs. I just felt in the zone and maybe looking back, um, being in the zone is hard to find and hard to describe, but I look back and I realised that it was quite simply, I hadn't put any pressure on myself. I wasn't thinking about past innings. I wasn't thinking about future innings. I was thinking, just do what you do today and you've got nothing to prove, just enjoy it. And uh, everything fell into place. Going for it, over the top she goes. Over the top of pointy goes. It's gone again, that's a better shot, that's four, beautifully played. Well, I think a lot of times players play their best when their life is in turmoil because um, you know, off the field you've got to face reality, in the middle it's, um, it's your refuge and no one can get to you and you do what you do best at and that's play cricket and uh, there's no sort of, um, there's no distractions, there's nothing else um, occupying your mind, it's purely play cricket. So. You'll often find players injured or you know, something happening off the field that, uh, that when they go and play cricket, they play their best cricket in those circumstances. There's the 50, and what a convincing way to bring it up. I never tried to look too far ahead. It was, you know, my mantra was, um, was really just face the next ball the best way you can possibly face it and minimise that concentration to a really small amount when the bowler's about to deliver the ball, switch on, then switch off. And so I never thought too far ahead, but um, once I got to 50 or 60, I, I sort of had a look at the clock and how many hours left and thought, oh, if I keep playing this way, I'm, I'm a chance to get 100. Well, he's cut that away. This will be four. This is running down towards the boundary. That is 10,000 runs for Steve Waugh, the third man in the history of the game of cricket to have achieved that milestone and a huge roar went up in this ground. 80s to 90s happened pretty quickly and then all of a sudden uh, yeah, the last day with the opportunity to, to score that 100. Here he goes, through cover. Come on Andy, Andy's chasing. We three, two, three. Two balls to come. Steve Waugh on 98. I think it just fell into place and it's like the perfect jigsaw, it's just you found the pieces at the right time and you know, in the fact that NASA kept the fieldsman back so Gilly could hit a single, I don't, again I don't know what mind games he was playing, maybe he, I think he wanted me on strike because he, he knew that I wanted to get 100 so there's probably a chance for them to get me out on that last ball with a premeditated shot. Yeah, NASA playing mind games, the Richard Dawson went down and had a bit of a chat probably about what they're going to eat that night or what movie they were going to see, it was nothing to do with cricket, that was obvious. Um, but the one player who probably settled me down the most was Alex Stewart, the England keeper. Funnily enough, um, you know, he just said to me, "So, do you write your own scripts?" You know, um, to, and that sort of relaxed me. And then I looked down at the crease, and as I was brushing my sweat away with the red rag, I saw a couple of strands of the red hanky in the, in the crease line. And it's funny how you, you, your mind thinks as a cricket. I just thought, "Well, that's a sign. That's an omen. I'm going to be okay." But the one thing I did say to myself before he came in to bowl at last ball, I just said, "Don't premeditate the shot. Just let it happen." I didn't even feel the ball hit the bat, it just hit it perfectly and uh, 
shot us through the covers and then it was like um, someone had turned the volume up in the crowd. It was Before that it was like uh, the noise was sort of, I was cocooned a bit, it was like muted, it was probably a 5 out of 10 but when I hit the 4 was all of a sudden someone turned the volume on it was back to like 10 out of 10 volume. I could hear everything. I was aware of the noise and the excitement and uh, the only person I wasn't aware of was Gilly because he went for the high five which I didn't even know till I looked at the tape about three weeks later and then I apologised to him. And he felt like a rock star when I came off the ground. I was, you know, you come back out the balcony because people were still clapping and cheering and waiting around for about an hour after the game. Yes, equals to Donald Graven's tally in hundreds. It was more than that for Stephen Wall. They stood to him when he came out. They're standing when he's going off and he's not out. Not out 102. What a moment. It was a pretty uh, crazy five minutes and I often say if I was going to give someone part of my career to experience, it would have been those five minutes. That is a magnificent innings under pressure. You'll see none better. 40,000 fans and millions of viewers around the world have seen a great fire make a magnificent hundred under pressure.